one of them, which I thought this is a perfect example to talk to you about. And and please understand. I hope you on. I hope you know. I, I, I'm um, not coming from a negative point of view, but I just feel a little bit lost with where I'm going. You mm-hmm. know. So um, and I know things don't change overnight and blah blah blah. But I, I just I, I anyway. I'll explain this and then. So they all speak Italian, right? They this don't is, speak any English. Hold on. This is my your hus- your husband's side husband. of the family. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and. They don't speak any English. They only speak Italian. My Italian's quite rusty, but I try <laughs> to make an effort, you know, and I do my best, you know. It's not great, but I do my best. So his auntie was asking me something in Italian, and at that moment I was doing some work anyway, so my mind wasn't concentrating, and I couldn't understand her, and she was going on and on and on, and she just kept saying the same thing to me, and then – you know, she started doing hand gestures, and then I finally understood what she was saying, and she was like, she did his face like, oh, are you stupid, you know? <laughs> and I have to say, I just went to the room, and I was just so upset. And I know that you were saying, you know, I have to work on not letting that bother me, but that's well, just not something I, I would do to someone else, do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, in essence, what you, why you're upset is because that is something that you – if to do that to someone else, put yourself in the state of mind you'd have to be in to do that to someone else, right? Yeah. yeah. You're projecting that onto her as if that's exactly what she did. I don't understand that. So you're put yourself in the state of mind. Yeah. That it would take for you to do that to someone. You're projecting that onto her as if that's what she thinks about you. That's because you think you, your way of thinking is how everybody thinks. You're projecting yeah. your way of thinking onto other people as if everybody thinks just like you. That's an assumption that your way of thinking is all righteous and superior. You're going to have to bring yourself down a little bit to realize that not everybody thinks like that. Not everybody would need to be in that state of mind and that type of nonverbal communication to her might not have been that big of a deal or that horrific in her mindset. So you're catastrophizing it based on how catastrophic you think it is based on your perceptions and your sensitivities and based on your thought and your concept of thinking. And so what you're doing is you're projecting your issues onto this woman as if she has the same exact way of thinking, the same same exact life, and she is just as um, – so, does that make sense? The only way you would have that is to make the assumption that she is thinking the same exact way you would, and she's yeah. doing that because she thinks you're deserving of it. Yeah, so I tried to like – like I, I just went off, right, because I, I obviously – and everybody was looking and I was really embarrassed, right? So that didn't help at all, right? And so I went off and I thought about it. I thought, oh, could I have misread that? Could I have misunderstood it? Blah, 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 right? And I think the part I struggle with is like I, I don't think I'm better than other people, but I, I wouldn't intentionally do something to hurt someone's feelings. I mean, if you if you if you're going to ridicule someone. I mean, you're you assuming she's trying to hurt you. Yeah, but what, what would be the benefit of telling someone they're stupid? Maybe it has nothing you know, to do like, with you. You're assuming it's all about you. Maybe it has nothing to do with you. Maybe it has to do with her sense of wanting to feel right. Maybe it has to do with her sense of rightness. It has nothing to do with you. You're making it all about you as if life revolves around you and you're in the center. It's very self-centeredism, right? Okay. That's, so that's symptomatic, right, of someone who is, you know, the assumption again is that the way you think and your perspective of life, all people should have that. You wouldn't do that to someone else. So to you, it's horrifying when someone else does it because you're assuming they're doing it with your state of mind. So you're projecting onto them your state of mind, which to do this would take something, you know, horrific. And you're feeling horrified by it. It's your horror that you are experiencing. It's your fear of being being made to feel stupid. It's your fear of being assumed stupid that is creating your sensitivity to it. 
you are afraid of being seen as stupid. Therefore, yeah. any indication of stupidity to you brings about this problem. Her intentions might have just been, oh, I'm sucky. I suck at this. It could have been yeah. her communicating, I'm frustrated. I suck at this. And because you're so sensitive to being perceived as stupid, you're projecting that onto her as if she thinks you're stupid when it's all in your head. So how are you supposed to get over it? You get over yourself. You get over yourself. It's not necessarily getting over that people think that way. Yeah. You have to get over yourself for caring. It's not about yeah. their perception. It's about your sensitivity. I don't know. I just know how to change that. Do yeah. You know what I mean? like, I, well, if you knew how to change it, I think you'd change it already, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because, like, I don't want to be that sensitive. And I think growing up, that's all I got drummed into me is you're too sensitive, you're too sensitive. And I wanted to not be that sensitive, but I just didn't know how to do it. You know? Yeah. Well, it comes down to pride in yourself and your thoughts. It comes down to you being, you know, desperate to be accepted. Your sensitivity is an act is actually desperation speaking. Yeah. You know, and the neediness, your needy to get other people's validation. This really comes back to you believing that your security and your lovability comes from out there okay so yeah. the, the answer is when you say i don't know how to get rid of this the answer is learn and become aware that the answer is yours it's not theirs it's not their answer if you rely on other people's answers you're stuck projecting onto them your insecurities and wanting them to fulfill them the way you need it to be fulfilled because you're yeah. so damn insecure in yourself, weak, yeah. incapable. I mean, I'm not saying that this is what you are. I am just using the language of, of what you think you are, right? I'm assuming yeah. you're thinking these things. Because you feel so weak and incapable, your need for them to take care of you exactly how you need them to is really strict. So if they deviate yeah. to you, it is an abomination. Yeah. How dare they? It's like calling out sin. You're looking for everybody's sin. You know, because you can't handle life on your own. You're looking for everybody else to accommodate to your needs. And so that's why you're so sensitive. Because you need everybody else to accommodate to you and where you're at. It's kind of selfish, right? I know you don't see it that way because in your mind you're like, this is just being nice. Why can't they just be nice? Well, what's your definition of nice? And they have to do what you need them to do. Yeah. Right? So you're going to have to look inside yourself and realize at some point that if you continue to think that it's everybody else's job to make you feel safe, everybody else is a slave to your sensitivity. And eventually people just, put, just discount you. They literally are like, we... She's on a whole other planet. If she's upset at us, I can't take responsibility because it's yeah. her problem. If I have yeah. to adapt to her sensitivity, I am her slave and we have to always tiptoe around her. So people are walking on eggshells around you. You don't even know yeah. that. Yeah. Right. That her nonverbal communication, which may well have been her sense of frustration, not being able to communicate to you, you made yourself a victim to that. Mm. I'm a victim. That victimization now is they're out to get me. Why would anybody treat me this way? You know, that that hiding that you're doing. It's like it's in your mind validation that maybe you are a piece of shit. And then you go back and forth to, I'm a piece of shit, to, no, I'm not. I'm a great person. So you go into your pride, and you go back into shame, and the pride and the shame. But e either way, you're a victim of how they're treating you. But you can only be a victim to your expectations of treatment. Mm -hmm. So your expectations yeah. of treatment are coming from your neediness. I need them to be super sensitive and they need to be all like, it's like in a subconscious way, you're probably expecting to be treated as if you are damaged, like a fragile little egg. And I'm assuming too, you treat other people that way. 
Yeah, that's probably where I. It's probably where I come from. Is like damage. I, I probably no, 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 not that. I feel like I make an effort to be sensitive to other people because they're damaged. Not because they're damaged. Yes, that's where that comes from. The, you're saying that their their feelings are sensitive, and I don't want to hurt no. their feelings. They just don't just observe it. Just observe that what you just said. Mm. I don't want to hurt their feelings, as if their feelings are relative to you like you're in control of their feelings well what if they're in control of how sensitive they are so you what you're doing is you're treating them to the sensitivity you need because you need that sensitivity you're aware of your sensitivity so you treat people to that level of sensitivity which for you comes from being damaged there is a sense of I've been mistreated and I couldn't handle it so therefore other people can't handle it so I need to, I will treat them the way I want to be treated, which is as if they I'm damaged and need to be treated differently. So, so I know this isn't what it consciously sounds like in your head because you're making an assumption. You're you're thinking that your way of thinking is just how everybody should think, not realizing that that way of thinking comes from a perspective of extreme sensitivity, and you're assuming everybody is as sensitive. You know, everybody should be a slave to how not to hurt someone's feelings mm. which is what you're doing yeah. and then you become offended there's a sense of being offended in it I yeah. can't believe I'm offended that they don't follow the same level of sensitivity based on your personal needs Can you see me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You need to think about that for a second. If you can't see this, you're cor you're correct in that how are you going to get over other people's treatment? You have these expectations and you have these needs that it's their job to to mold themselves around. Yeah. As if they're supposed to know how sensitive you are. As if we should all know how victims feel and how they need to be treated based on how they've been victimized so that we don't make them feel victimized ever again. You see yeah. how that's very much self-centered. You might not have seen that when I first said everything's revolving around you and everybody needs to be aware of your feelings and thoughts because, you know, again, this is, I think, something to be observed for you. Just observe it. That if you continue to need other people to make you feel safe or you need your body to make you feel safe or you need your money or you need your you know whatever it is to make you feel safe what it is that you need in others you are going to require or assume or expect that they understand and know what those needs are I need these yeah. needs met why I mean I treat everybody else as if they're broken and needy why can't I be treated as if I'm broken and needy the way I need it? You know? Mm. Broken meaning they're super sensitive and we should be aware of that sensitivity. You know? I have been, you know, when I go out with friends, okay, I have a community I live in. My kids have other parents that they, um, that I, I co mingle with. I have a community. And when I go out, I go out to be real. I am real. I'm me. And I understand social grace as I was raised in the same culture, right? You're not even including cultural differences in how people should be treated. You're, you're so self-centered around what you think that you're offended. And maybe culturally their body language is matching Something you should figure out. You know, it's kind of like taking a pack of dogs that have learned to manage themselves and then they go into another pack of dogs and the communication is not connecting. Is it because this pack of dogs hate you or is it because their way of communicating is different? You know? Um, but, but if you're positioned to need other people's validation, they better know your culture and how you guys communicate. Because you're now going to be offended. And they got to tiptoe around you and go, why is she upset? I don't understand. You know, so going back to my community, you know, I may have a strong feeling about something we're talking about. And someone in the group may feel, 
that I am just mean. How does she have such a strong tone of voice? Or, or I don't, I don't know. I'm just making an assumption of how I can be interpreted. Should I? There have been times that there's um, in my childhood, especially like in junior high, where I'm just being me, and all of a sudden there's a friend that won't talk to me, and I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know. She, in her mind, created some something I did wrong, and she's mad that I did something wrong. Whereas I'm just going at my my relative awareness. She's making the assumption that I know what I should and how I should do it, the way she knows how she should and should do it, and I'm not intentionally because I'm trying to hurt her. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And after a while, I'm just like, uh, it's just not worth being their friend because I'm just being myself. I don't intend to hurt anybody's feelings. And you kind of have to go into your intentions and, and go into, do you think they intend to make you feel like shit? In the moment, I, I, you do. I, no, I do. No, no, no. Why would they treat anybody this way? That's where that comes from. Why would they do that? I just, there's some things, like, okay, so there's, I think there's some areas that are shades of grey, but I think there are some areas of black and white where if you say to someone a particular thing, it can, the majority of people would take offence to it. If they're, if are they some, are needy, Yes. The, the needy people will take offense to it. You need to say it. You need to see it differently. People who need to be adapted to and accommodated to will be offended. I'm offended. You have to adapt to my needs. That's what that is. So being offended is like saying that you're not doing it the way I want it done. And, and you're not meeting my needs. So it's very dysfunctional. Offended. Right. What does that have to do with me? If, if someone's offended my, by me being real and uh, whatever, what does that have to do with me? What does that have to do with me if someone's offended? Doesn't it have everything to do with their their offendedness it's theirs their, they are offended they're the ones that don't like it do you see what i'm saying i'm really trying to get my head around this because i do i do see what you're saying right it's 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 you you're the way you've perceived what someone is saying the offended person it's the way that they were they perceived what was said or done, right? Relative. The key that. is to go further relative. than that. It is relative yeah. to their sensitivity and their yeah. needs. So it comes yeah, down yeah, to that. my neediness. But where's the ownership on the person who's doing the action? None. To not None. It's not so their... Say, no. It, I'm not saying that if they're spitting on you and they're cutting your hair, you know, I'm not saying yeah. that that's not happening. Your yeah. offendedness isn't theirs. That's yours. So you have choices in the matter. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Okay, okay, so what yeah. you're saying is yeah. they don't have a choice. They need to, because of my needs, accommodate to my way of being, and now I'm upset. And being upset about it is actually a form of manipulating them into knowing what you need and they need to accommodate to it. You're being manipulative, right? Mm -hmm. You want them to change, right? The if, if you if it was that offensive and you didn't need them to change, you'd end the relationship like this. I have no problem like if um, if I'm on the receiving end of someone having psychosis, if you want to call it that. They've stolen my shit. They've done things. I have a choice to say. Um, those are things that I don't want to be a part of. I end the relationship. I The relationship isn't worth it to me. Mm. Right? Natural consequences, right? Mm. But to be offended means that I want to try to get them to change. Because I need the relationship. There's a neediness in being mm. offended. Right? Mm. Yeah, I have to think about that one. I, I, I can... I, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm sorry, I'm hearing and understanding part of it, but I have to get my head around it. 
Yeah, and yeah. that's what my goal is, is to, right now, is to get your head around it. Is to okay. actually see your response. Was it really that bad? Was what this person did, if you could go into their mind and see oh, they were reflecting their personal frustration, or even if they were like, God, she's so dumb. What does that have to do with you? That's the part I don't understand about myself. Well, you're doing like, the best you can. Could you do? Could you have done better? No, in that moment, I mean, I'm not Italian. I'm not, and they speak a dialect. I mean, I yeah, do the best I can. Okay, so pause. Just them, pause. But... Just stay right there. Just stay. Pause. You're doing the best you can. Yeah. So, what is them criticizing you or being frustrated with themselves? have to do with what you're doing. Could you do better than that? No, nope. I couldn't. No, exactly. So what is them, even if they are criticizing you, what is that, what is that going to change? What is that going to do? You know, if I'm on the receiving end of criticism, <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. This is where my ability is at the moment. Them okay. being disappointed in my ability does nothing. Does nothing. Yeah. So you have to just say, well, you know, even if they feel that way, this is my reality. So if they think I'm dumb, that's not my problem. That's their problem for expecting me to be able to do more than I'm capable. So they can live with their, their feelings of discontent. They can be frustrated. This is where I'm at. And if they, you know, there's a point of honoring your reality and honoring their reality and separating the two. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if my frustration comes from the fact, like in that instance, I would like to have stood up for myself. But I, again, I don't know if you're going to tell me that's the wrong angle. But Well, if you I do, if, if you stand up for yourself, you are now full of drama. Yeah. Yeah, well, because you're making an assumption. See, here's again, you have no idea. Your your assumptions could be wrong. Yeah. You're, you're, the, where you're struggling in this moment, in this conversation, is you think your assumptions were true. Yeah. She yeah. thinks I'm dumb. And then you go into de uh, degrading that person by saying, how could they treat someone that way? I would never treat someone that way. That is being yeah. offended. So you go into your pride and your levels yeah. of I am an amazing person and I would never treat someone that way. So you're trying to make yourself bigger than them. Yeah. Right? So you're going into ego. Yeah. Because you think your thoughts are gold. Like I am Jesus. That's what you mm. think. Mm. You're not questioning your assumption. And my what I'm trying to get you to do is you need to really question your assumptions. You could be wrong. You could be totally wrong. And if you respond with that type of defensiveness, if you're going to become offended and defend, you're gambling with the fact that you could be completely off target. You could be completely, but you're going to treat them as if they were that bad. So you're the one who's the asshole treating people badly. That's how people are assholes. You know, if you look at it from a distance, people who are assholes assume what you that's they're, they're doing what you're doing yeah you feel like you've been mistreated you become offended you defend yourself now you're an asshole especially if everybody around you didn't interpret it that way yeah. based on your interpretation your asshole response would make sense but most people give them more credit they're not like that You know, why make an assumption like that about someone else? Basically, what you're doing is you're treating everybody else as if, I mean, you're just bringing your, your baggage around to his family. You're creating the same <laughs> drama you create everywhere exactly. else. So have you ever thought it's you? Have you ever looked at yourself? It's me that's the problem. I'm the one that's taking this everywhere and treating everybody the same way. Maybe it's me. No matter what family I'm in, I'm going to create the same drama based on my neediness. I expect people to fulfill my needs. And if they don't, I'm offended because I would do that for other people because I'm a codependent type of person, right? 
I live in codependency. Why doesn't everybody else live in codependency? So if they don't take care of me, I'm offended by that. I want my needs met. Because I would do that for someone else. Therefore, they should be that way too. You know, you're projecting all of your issues onto everybody. It doesn't matter who they are. You go straight to your old stories. Never questioning your interpretation or assumptions are a bunch of self-righteous lies. You know, it's a way to it's a way to survive in your in your narcissism. You know, it's a way to survive. You promote yourself. You demote others. You know, self promotion. Even in the cloud of it, too, I think that makes it hard to see is the way you're promoting yourself is by being kind, by being sensitive. You know what I mean? By, by uh, approaching everybody as if they are just as sensitive. You know, you could see that and go, what's the harm in that? What's the harm in that? Well, the harm is that what what you're not seeing is that's why you're offended all the time cuz you're expecting you expect that out of others and so the harm is that you feel um lack in being cared for there's a sense of lack that you get out of that there's a terrible downside to it and that's what you're experiencing is the downside sucks i mean how did you like how did you like feeling that way in that moment how did you like feeling that offended and then that, yeah. how you how you positioned yourself around it not questioning it i am stupid they think i'm stupid i would never treat someone that way that being offended part of it that's the downside that's mm. the downside you know being i don't know how else to say it but you're accommodating to victims that's what that is. I'm accommodating to victims. So when other people don't accommodate, it's offensive. And you feel victimized as a victim, you know. So that, that victim position of being mistreated, it really comes from the idea that uh, you deserve to be treated better. You know, I deserve it's a deserving, prideful, um, even if it's, even if it's like, you should be, you should be nice. There's a social, social, um, expectation, whatever it is that they're, them not meeting that expectation to you, you took it as if, it means that they are disrespecting you. I have a great example of this. I have a great example. So we moved, um, I'm from the west of the United States. You know, the I was born in California. I lived in Alaska. I've lived in Washington State for most of my life. Went, have been living in Boise, Idaho, which is all the western states. And so my husband and I have moved to the Midwest, to the East Coast. And um, a few years ago, we moved to Alabama. And Alabama has a unique culture. They don't move. There's a ton of history that's very um, dysfunctional. The wars, the white supremacy. There's all sorts of weirdness down there that makes sense when you look at the history. And um, there's certain cultural communication that they teach. And they teach these children at a young age. So when you are speaking to an adult, the children are to call the men, say, yes, sir. And they are to speak to the, the women saying, yes, ma'am. That is not the way it works everywhere else. Mm. Mm. I don't teach that to my kids. You don't, I don't teach that. I never would and I never have. Um, so when they, we moved down south, um, my daughter was going through the, through the cafeteria. And the woman had asked my youngest, she was in first grade, kindergarten, yeah. if she would like this. And she goes, yes. And the woman was like super offended. Right. At a first grader. Yeah. yeah. What did you say? Yes. Say it again. You know, and she was treated by just mm -hmm. saying yes as if she was intentionally disrespecting this woman. Right. 
Yeah. Is that true? No. no. Do you see how then she yeah. was abused by this yeah. woman with her assumptions that my daughter was intentionally disrespecting her, not thinking that, oh, the world around the South doesn't do this type of shit? Yeah. No, I get it. Okay. So essentially you're doing the same thing. Yeah. But, and I understand that, and thank you for sharing that, because that, that helps explain the situation. But there are instances where people, I'm sorry, but there is no misunderstanding about their intention to offend you or to insult you. Yeah, and you care about it. So that's the, that's where you have problems. That's where I have my problems. Yeah. yeah because it's I, nothing to do with them. No, it has no, to do the, with my you. My problem is that I, I take it on board. Yeah, and no, because no. you have that problem, I need you to listen yeah. to this. Yeah. You're like the woman treating my daughter because you're that sensitive. So you twist mm. and warp everything. So of course there are people that want to offend you. They drive by and give you the middle finger. Mm. Yes. That's not, I'm not saying that doesn't exist. Mm. I'm not saying that the woman didn't literally feel disrespected by a six-year-old. She thought the mm. six-year-old was intentionally being like, fuck you, I'm not going to say ma'am. That's what mm. she projected onto my daughter. She thought that was real. Yeah. yeah. So there are things like that relative to the person who's in it. It's mm. true. You feel that way. And it's true. There's someone who thinks you did something terrible and you are something terrible and you deserve that disrespect. That is true. Mm. So at some point, is it you have to be willing to say, I am not um, in charge of other people's assumptions and beliefs. So I am offending people just by being here. Yes. Yeah. There are people who are that sensitive who are going to go to the level and degree to think that you think you're better than them. You're mm. just going around by yourself. But they look at you and think that you think that you're better than them. And they're offended by you. You have no clue what's happening. But into them, you are disrespectful. To them, mm -hmm. relative to their neediness, yeah. you are that asshole. Yeah. Right? Like when you said, I should have defended myself. Yep. And you would have become the asshole that you are offended by. Not realizing yeah. that she would not have had a clue what you're talking about. Hmm. You get what I'm saying? And then in yeah, her no, mind, she's going to go, yeah. why would anybody treat people this way? You know, it's just this. At some point, someone has to be mature enough to go, I'm, it's not my fault. I'm not, it's not, I'm not in charge of your offendedness. You're in charge of being offended. You know, if someone's offended at you and treats you like shit, at some point you have to go, I'm just doing what I'm doing. Do an internal check and go, well, I'm doing the best I can. If they're offended, I can't, I'm, I'm not necessarily in charge of that. <laughs> they are. They're in charge of their neediness and sensitivity, mm. right? So this is where you're, when you say, but there are people that are this way. Well, of course there are. You're treating everybody like that. Yeah. In fear of being mistreatment, as if being mistreated is a true indication of your inferiority. So this really comes back to that fear of being seen as inferior. You have a very, very sensitive fear of mm. being seen as inferior. You're yeah. the one with the fear of it. Yeah. So that makes you highly sensitive to any treatment or you will distort treatment into indicating they think they're superior and they think yeah. I'm inferior and that's where it's your problem. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, so the only way to not be offended is to be okay with whatever people think about you. Yeah. Whatever they think. What then happens on the other side for you is if someone's offended by you, you realize that I can't be in charge of what their needs are. I don't know what their needs are. If I knew and they gave me clear boundaries, I would accommodate to that. But I'm yeah. just doing it the way I'm doing it. 
you know, relative to my needs. If you can make your needs very little, you're going to offend everybody. I'm, I'm really offensive. <laughs> I'm laughing because anybody who listens to me is going to be offended by my dress. They're going to be offended by my language. If it were me, I would never use those curse words. Heard that so many times. Um, you know what I mean? It's like, should I be accommodating to the sensitivities of those people? Validating their boundaries and rules and boxes they want everybody to fit into? Should we, we, should we all accommodate to the weakest person in the group? In the group? What do you think that does for the weakest person in the group? It justifies what they think. It yeah. And it and it essentially enables them. And it gives them a sense of power because they are now manipulating everybody into doing what their needs are and it actually can give them a sense of superiority. Mm. You know what I mean? So the for you to to stop being offended, you're going to have to, you know, fulfill yourself. You're going to have to become self-reliant. That way you're not so needy on others to accommodate to you. So what you're really sensitive to and what you're hoping they will accommodate to and what you're projecting everybody else needs accommodating to is inferiority. You tiptoe around making sure others don't feel inferior. Yeah. What do you think you're attract? Okay. What do you think you're attracting? I'm gonna make sure that they don't feel inferior. Who are you attracting? The people who want to make me feel inferior. The people who want to be superior. No, superior. no one wants yeah. to make you people. <laughs> that's you. I love that you're laughing right now because you're like, oh, that's me. I heard it the moment it came out. You did. You did. People want to make me feel inferior. Oh, and that's what you're spewing into everybody around you. You're always sensitive that they are not making you feel inferior. There it is. Look in the mirror. <laughs> if I'm around someone who's in that state of mind, I leave. I just don't want to yeah. be around it. Yeah. You know, and when people, I just don't take responsibility for it. I see it as their own personal problem. And if I get involved, oh, that's like a cat in your face with their scratching your face off. It's like you want your face scratched out? Go hang out with someone who's afraid of being inferior. They will scratch your fucking eyeballs out. Yeah, yeah. Because you have to be so sensitive. Mm. Tiptoeing around them like you're walking on eggshells. That's like living with a narcissist. Mm. You know? And it's miserable. So when I... I have people around me I just really distance myself I never talk about anything important I'm very casual I'm very like socially neutral I never get engaged or involved in any deep conversations with these people and it has nothing to do with me being offended by them it has me more to do with my own protection from being abused and battered as soon as I'm myself they will be offended and I'm not doing shit for that. You know, it's, I'm like, I'm not going to do anything for their being offended. They can create a story about me at any moment. Mm. I have no, I have no control over that. So my way of not being in abusive relationships is to not allow the relationship to become anywhere close to dependent or even code, nowhere close to codependency for sure. I don't be, I don't engage in it. You know, there's one person in particular that is my husband's really good friends with her boyfriend. Mm. And she has serious psychosis. And it's very draining to be around. And she's constantly in fight. 
and um, and she'll open up. She'll actually, you know, if you give her the opportunity, she will hijack you and make you listen to her as she vomits out all the ter terrible things in her life. And I'm assuming because I'm not engaging it, she could be offended. Like, she doesn't even care. How can she not even show any? She has no empathy. I won't give her that. Right? So I'm like, oh, well, that's some, that sounds like something you might need to get help with. I'm sure you'll be just fine. And then I disengage. Can you see how I'm offensive to that? Especially if she needs, like, oh, I need someone to care about me. And she's in her mind going, if that was someone else, I would give them flowers and come see them. And I would, like, take care of them. Because that's what she wants from others. Part of the drama she creates is to create. It, it, it is just. I will, I ref, It can be perceived as cold. By someone. Who won't engage. I will not engage in it. It would be like letting a leech. Onto my soul. And then to suck the soul out of me. I would never do that. I would never allow someone. I, don't, I have boundaries, right, around, um, I have I have a very in clear boundary around other people's victimization and, and sensitivity. And when they entitle themselves to me, I don't necessarily give it to them. Mm. And now they're offended. Mm. Mm. I don't know if you're hearing this conversation a little differently now. Yeah. Or if I'm off in La La Land, I don't know. No, 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 no I'm just listening to you. Because I'm, I'm giving you the perspective of someone receiving this shit. Yeah, no, I get it, I get it. You know, and again, my lack of attachment to her horrible grievances is going to be perceived as cold, uh, harsh, because I'm not buying into it. I'm not engaging no. into it. I'm not saying that's what you're doing, but this is an example no, no. of it. No, I can relate to I can relate to the position you're taking because there are certain personalities that I take that position similar to you. Yeah, where you right? don't so engage. So my sister-in-law, right, like moans and groans about her whole life and she's had probably one of the easiest lives I know, right? Yeah, and it's so, really hard to be around that because they no. don't – It's it's always dark. There's, they bring yeah. this cloud of darkness and this energy of like, oh, like they need to be cared for. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. Okay, so, and, and, so that's what you're I doing. That. You're not seeing that in those moments. Yeah. In those moments. Yeah. It's not that I don't see it. I think you're opening my mind to, I obviously feel that, so I look at the situations, right? I feel that my sister-in-law is not justified. Whereas I'm obviously justified to myself that my, mine is justified. Yes, you know? that, so yes that's I'm what I to understand the difference. You know? Yeah, when I said to you the problem here is you are never questioning your assumptions. You think yeah. that they are sacred. No, but I, can I just can I just maybe challenge that because in this case with this lady, I walked away and I thought to myself. Have I misunderstood this, right? So let's let's take this one out of it because okay. I, I think I think okay. But even though your response to I would never treat someone that way, yeah, yeah, totally. You totally. clearly started questioning it and negated your thought. So the truth is, you didn't question it. So I want yeah. you to, as much as you want to argue with me, just tell yourself the goddamn yeah. truth. Why are you defending yeah. something that you clearly struggle with? I'm not, trying, I'm not trying to defend it. I just feel that there you go good. defending yourself no, again. There's no reason for you to do that. You paid me to crack it I know, open. I know. To crack I it open and to say you. this is where you're struggling. You are not questioning your assumptions. You're clearly capable of questioning someone else's. And you don't have I, and then you don't take response of that. You don't you don't notice with her, the, your sister-in-law. Notice how you did you can separate yourself and if she's upset that you're cold, you can go, oh, my God, she's got problems. Mm. Like, I'm not – all of a sudden, you're okay with being insensitive. Mm. Okay? Do you see? You, you're mm. just not doing that with yourself mm. you're, because you're, you're the one that has the needs that aren't being met. 
She mm. comes to you with needs and you're not meeting them. She mm. cannot believe how insensitive you are. I guarantee you she's talking to a therapist about you right now. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And because she's not questioning her assumptions. Yeah. Question your assumptions. You started off that way. It sounds like in this particular situation, but it didn't yeah. really get anywhere. I would yeah. never treat someone that way. Well, that's not true. Mm. <laughs> you would yeah. under certain circumstances. And you're yeah, yeah. and for you, you're assuming that that's what the circumstance that you're in because that's how you, that's the circumstance that you would have to have to treat someone this way. You're assuming that that's what she thinks then. So you're assuming for her to to have that nonverbal communication that she thinks you're dumb. Mm. That's your sensitivity mm. that you're projecting as if she thinks you're dumb, as if she thinks mm. the same way, as if she's afraid of the same thing, as if she's mm. trying to be superior to you. I mean, you're just projecting you onto her as if she's identical to you. That's yeah. because you don't question in any way the validity, the truth in reality of your assumption. You think it's true within your own non-reality, if you want to call it that. What if you go into reality, if we were to expose the truth of what was she really thinking, it probably is nowhere close to the way you were thinking. You're a totally different cultural upbringing. What's the likelihood that it's going to be completely identical? It's zero. Well, let's, just, let's, just say, let's just say we explored it and it was in English and she said, oh my God, you're so stupid. Why don't you understand this? Okay, so is that let's, your... Let's, yeah, we've so we're repeating a part of the conversation right now. Let's do it again yeah. so that you understand it. Oh, so let's just say she actually thinks you're stupid. Mm. What you do is you go into the reality of, you know what? I really don't know how to speak this language, and if she thinks I'm stupid, she's an asshole, and I don't care. I'm doing the best I can. That's the part I struggle with. Yeah, because you you need them to validate yeah, you. I, that, that's that's your problem. neediness. Yeah. That's what I've been trying yeah. to tell you. Your sensitivity is supposed to be met by other people. Yeah. That's why you have a problem with it. Because they should know. How would you, why would you do that? Well, who knows why they would do that? Is it your business? You know, well, that's your... that's the thing. I shouldn't, I shouldn't worry about... No, you, the only way for you to not be sensitive to other people thinking you're stupid is for you to not be afraid of stupidity. Uh. So, what if you are stupid? What if it's true? Uh. See, to you, that is bad. Being stupid is a bad thing. Uh. So, therefore, you're offended. Yeah. So, what? Like, I'm not afraid of being looked at as stupid. Actually, in relative capacity of the human logic and intellect, I am stupid. Uh. What's wrong with that? You know, so the belief that stupid is bad, that's your pride talking. What's wrong with being yeah. stupid? What if you are? You know, what if, you know, the language barrier, if she thinks that, I mean, this is the funny thing is that how did, how would anybody just go into the type of person who would think, that because you have a language barrier, you're dumb. Yeah. Just go there for a second. Mm. Adults. Which is hard. It's hard to learn new languages as adults. It's way easier as a child. Mm. How many languages do you speak? Um, English, my main, and then a little bit of three others. Okay, so four languages. Yeah. Okay. So, what type of person, just go there in observation, would it take to actually uh, define someone struggling in a, with language barriers, the struggling side, to understand as stupid? Because you actually care about that type of person and what they well, think of you. A stupid thing. Like, why do I give a shit? Why do I? I think this is the part that really <laughs> fucking pisses me off, excuse my language, but it pisses me off. Because it's not just about this, right? This comes back to the whole, or everything. We come back to the body issue, we come back to the family, we come back to all of this bullshit. Where I give a shit 
what someone thinks. I know I'm not stupid. Even, even like, I, I mean, yeah, it's but so you stupid think, to me that if, but you think stupidity is bad. So it it's your beliefs about it that actually are why you um take take offense. Exactly. Or actually so, give that type of person credibility. So you're actually seeing yourself in the standards. You believe the standard that you're being criticized by. Therefore, you respond to the criticism. So that's what's amazing about this. Um, I saw this in myself when I was breaking free from the thin supremacy. The standard that I was holding myself to was so inhumane. I realized that it was me that believed in in inhumane standards. Therefore, the fear of anything less than that was catastrophic. So I catastrophized it. Mm. You believe you should know these languages. Yeah, I do. I believe it. You're the I, asshole. I, I, Just so that you yeah. know. Remember when I said <laughs> what type of person would yeah, yeah. expect... Someone who's learning a language where there is no bridge. It's you either know it or you don't. There is no yeah. interpreter. Yeah, but yeah. You should know it. Otherwise, you're dumb. Guess who thinks that? Yeah. About myself. But I wouldn't think about someone else. That doesn't matter. That's what you're holding. You're the asshole. Yeah, to myself. Yeah, but your offensive, your offendedness is being an asshole to, because you think she's expecting that. You're treating her as if she's the asshole. Guess who's the asshole? You're projecting your asshole onto her. You, I, I'm sensing a bit of tension from you. No, <laughs> I'm trying to get you to see it. You're the asshole and you're pissed that she's being that to you. But when you look at yourself, you're the one. Yeah. Yeah, I have no tension. I just get excited when I talk. Or frustrated? I feel like I'm frustrating you. No, not at all. See, that's you. That's not me. I'm yeah. not frustrated. This is an important conversation. It is important conversation. I don't know. Why would I be frustrated? See, there's an. You're. I'm like, no, not at all. You're. You're the one who's sensitive to seeing other people be. I'm not frustrated at all this is what do I have to be you're like actually this? being really you're actually in terms of the clients I've worked with you're easy this is easy so no I have been frustrated and this is not frustration <laughs> I'm just being sense. alive with my communication yeah 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 so with that said you'll figure this out don't hold yourself to a standard above your actual reality Look at the reality and truth. You're the one holding yourself to the ability to be able to speak a language perfectly without a learning curve. You should just know it immediately. And, and, and you're probably using that ability. This is where the ego comes in. You're using that language ability to say, I am smart. So there's probably a degree yeah. of pride and you're not even seeing that that's why you're sensitive. Yeah, no, no, you're right, you're right. No, I, I, I get that. I would agree with that. 100%. Good. Okay, have you ever thought that maybe that's why you're so sensitive to criticism? Because you're trying to defend your pride? She thinks I'm dumb. As if she thinks the same way you do about pride in four languages. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can yeah. speak these languages. I want them to like me. I want to be seen as I am super smart because then they'll like me. So you're not seeing that part of your ego yeah. driving the sensitivity of like, oh, they think I'm dumb, assuming that everybody has the same type of ego drive. Yeah. Now, maybe they do. Let them win. Okay. If you don't let them win, you will always lose. You'll always be having to, it's like trying to get to the top. I'm the best. Yeah. And they come up and they tear it down. And you're like, oh, how can they do that? Well, because they're trying to be the best. Why don't you let them be the best? And now that you're not a threat. Yeah. Let them win, you know? But yeah, go into your own stupidity and what you define as stupid. So your own pride in the needing to be seen as smart and the thought that I am smart is what, and the pride in it, the pride I think is the key to this, oh, is denial, first of all. You go into denial because you have to deny anything that makes you feel stupid. But you also have to, yeah, and, and some of that denial comes in, to, is be, 
is transferred into blame, blaming everybody else. Like being offended. Think of the pride that goes into the feeling of pride and 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 almost like an over the big the bigness of your head, right? Like think of the bigness that goes into being offended about how people are treating you. That's like saying I deserve better treatment. Yes, and in some cases, it's true. You shouldn't just let your spouse punch you in the face. You shouldn't just, you know, there's boundaries there. But in this case, it was something as simple as a look. Just a nonverbal communication that took you down into a tailspin. And it wasn't her so much as you probably feeling inadequate at the ability to have language because of the need for you to be perceived as super smart. Perfect. Yeah. So your Perfect. imperfection in it and your aware being aware that you were struggling made you feel stupid because yeah. of how you look at it. It's not real. It's not real. I mean, look at the evidence of your pride. Your pride has put so much work into this that you have four languages you're juggling in your head. Mm. You know? Yeah. It's a lot that, of outputs. That, that's, that's, I think that's me if I had to sum it up. You're right. I think it's like if I look at every aspect of my life, Similar to what you were saying is that I set such a high expectation to be perfect at everything. Yeah, and you project that onto everybody. Yeah. You're not seeing it. You're assuming. No, yeah, you're assuming. And that, well, and I think what's, I like what you just said. If you look at what's driving it, it is your fear of stupidity. Your fear of being seen as a failure. Your, it's a fear-based. Yes. I, fear of being, poor, being seen as poor, being yes. seen as all of those things, as as black, as whatever it is, all yes. those things that I think other people are judging me about, but I'm obviously judging myself yes. about. Yes, that's it's actually you that believes that, and yeah. now you care that other you don't want other people to think the same thing. Yeah. Do you see how it starts in, and then you project it out onto others as if they think the same way. Yeah, the problem yeah. is that you're not questioning your assumption. You think it is real and true. Dogma. Black people are yeah. inferior. You actually believe that shit. So you're doing yeah. all this stuff to say, but I'm not. See, yeah. I'll prove you wrong. Yeah. In essence, by having to do all that, you're actually promoting white supremacy. Yeah. It's not, you're not consciously doing that. No, consciously doing no. that. No, but be can horrible. you see how by saying, I'm not inferior because of my darker skin, I'll prove it to you. So you're now having to prove that you're not inferior, which is, a, yeah. which basically is stating, I'm afraid that I am inferior. So in order to not have that fear, I'm going to have proof that I'm not. Yeah. Whereas someone who intrinsically does not feel that way would just walk away. They would not have to argue or prove it. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's like if someone came to you and said, because you don't have children, you are an abomination to the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, no, no, I just you say, would not yeah, sit and I'm, argue with them. No, I would say whatever and I'd walk away. Yes, because you, know, you don't like, believe yeah. it. Okay, that's no, my point. Exactly. I'm showing you the other side, which is when you don't care yeah. and you don't believe yeah. it. You don't that's even. That's true, actually. Sorry to interrupt you, but that's true because I, I do get those comment, those types of comments of being without children. Yeah. And because I don't buy into it, and I don't believe it. It doesn't bother me nope. one bit. Exactly. That. Yeah. So because you actually believe. Yeah. In inferiority. Yeah. You are now highly sensitive to that trigger and it's yeah. really your sensitivity of being inferior that has created all of the obsessive compulsive the high overreach the perfectionism is to prove to yourself that you're not inferior because you actually underneath it all believe in inferiority you believe in inferiority I can honestly tell you from where I'm at today I don't believe in that whole paradigm. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of being. It's a it's a way to uh, to look at things. 
I was raised to look at things that way. I believed that there is heaven and hell, this or that, bad and good, stupid and smart. I believed in that because that was that that was the only direction I was taught to look at things. Yeah. I have come to realize in my own awakening and own awareness and own shift of consciousness that it is relative to that one position. What about all the other ways to look at it? So relative to someone who isn't taking into account relativity or context, if you just look at the content, it is true. You are inferior to that. My grade, I lost the game, right? But isn't that relative to where I'm at, my growth pattern? Like It's like saying, because I lost, I am not good. Well, does that mean that there is no ability? Does that mean, you see how linear that thought is? Yeah, Where yeah, It's not yeah. taking into account context. So, of course, the yeah. first grader is going to fail a third graders test does that mean that they are inferior no. maybe we should look at the test is inferior relative to the first graders awareness yeah so do you see there's context now yeah there is relativity if I believe that being black is inferior now you have to prove your whiteness in other ways yeah not looking at, well, that comes from a state of duality, which is this or that, because someone feels inferior and they're using their whiteness to feel better about themselves. Yeah. I mean, you're not looking at the context. Yeah. It's only true if you believe in white supremacy. That's really horrible. When you said that to me, I, I, I'd never thought of myself as someone believing that, you know. If you didn't, you wouldn't comply to it. No, exactly. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. It would make you laugh. Like, no, exactly. Like, are you kidding me? I mean, I understand the thought coming from someone who feels that terrible about who they are that they're going to attach to the skin color. That's what they're grasping at. But it's also the environment. You, I mean, that's like you know, you said that with you when you. That's what. What when you're a child, that's what you see. That's yeah. what you understand, yes. and that's what you believe. You yeah, know, you're, you're, out of the innocence the of the child, correct. It becomes the truth, you know? Out of the innocence of the child and the innocence of ignorance. Just total yeah. ignorance. It's ignorant. Right it to assume ignorant. those things. Yeah, it's total course. ignorance. But when you have to prove yourself otherwise, you are essentially yeah. validating the ignorance is true. Yeah, true. I have correct. to prove myself now to show that I'm not. Well, basically you're saying that statement is true, so therefore I have to disprove it to make yeah, it not yeah. true. To make it not yeah. true. Yeah. Whereas if it, you didn't think it was true, you would just go, okay, yeah, yes. Oh, you just have your superior. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you're an abomination for not having children. Oh, you're just so, oh, you just may need to go to church a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. That was good. All right. <laughs> I see. I'm so glad you don't get offended because I can come across like that, right? No, no it's fine. I mean, I know you're trying to help. I mean, it's different when you're in a situation where you're talking yeah. to someone who you know that's trying to help. Well, look it's, at the. I, so, quick. I think on your own, look at the look at the statement. Am I stupid? What does someone have to do? What should someone have to do to not be stupid? Like, and what's wrong with being stupid? You know, isn't it relative? Again, look at the context. Yeah. I am stupid. Well, in relation to what? Yeah, exactly. To, to um, astrophysics? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in relation to what? It's got, there's context around it. So your context or content, if you want to call it that, around what defines stupid is your ability to speak a fluid language, hmm. regardless of whether where you're at on the learning curve of it. Like yeah. taking a first grader and saying you should be a 10th grader in your ability, you dumbass. Yeah. Because where does the dumbness come from? 
Is it because you're trying to prove yourself superior? Mm. Like, what standards are you holding to yourself to? And where exactly. do you, Yeah, and it comes from you being inferior. If you didn't believe that you were inferior, you wouldn't have to overreach. Four yeah, goddamn exactly. languages. You know how many languages I speak? One. Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm so dumb, right? Yeah. I'm so stupid. You're not dumb. You're not dumb. <laughs> you not dumb at well, all? you see what I mean? Like, based yeah, on that content, exactly. based on the language ability, I even suck at my own language. Oh, it is ridiculous. I mean, like, you're right in context. I mean, you're talking about a woman who's 50 years old, doesn't speak any English, and also is speaking a dialect. So I'm not even talking about, yes. like, the um Like the book knowledge language. of... Exactly. It's it's a dialect, which you have to be born in that region to know. Yeah. But I'm holding, my, but I'm holding myself to that. Yeah, because that's knowledge. how needy you are Yeah. in your own sensitivity to being seen as dumb right i don't want to be seen as stupid so i should know dialect i should know it all yeah yeah and you're assuming that these people think you're stupid yeah just think about that you're making them out to be terrible people and where's the terribleness it's your own belief system that's terrible we could again break it down into what makes you stupid and inferior is it because you're black I think that's what I measure my, I know. I measure myself I know. against. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. It must be that. Like now that we've talked about this, I obviously feel I have to prove myself better through all these other avenues because I've obviously believed the idea that I'm inferior because of the color of my skin. Yeah, and you resent, so, and there's resentment in that. There's got to yeah. be resentment in that. That's why you've always wanted to be a different race. Because you resent yeah. it. You believe it and resent it as if it is your um, your victim to it. I'm a victim of the blackness. I yeah. just want to be a different race. You yeah. know? And you have to really question, well, is it the actual body? Is it the actual color and the pigment of my skin and the history of my biology? Or is it someone else's? inferiority complex that I'm accommodating to. I'm actually accommodating to a cultural inferiority complex. Yeah. When I shouldn't, Uh, when I shouldn't have to, if I don't believe it, I won't accommodate to it. It's not my job to inform others how wrong they are. Yeah. I'm right, they're wrong. And that's another feeling that may come out of this. I'm right, they're wrong. That's my rightness and their wrongness. That's where the, I would never treat someone that way. They're treating me that way. There's a right and a wrong. That's the state of duality that this comes from. The way out is to actually go into your wrongness and be okay with it. It's not to defend the wrongness. It's to say, yes, there are people out there. Because you're one of those people that holding yourself to this standard. Because you hold yourself to those crazy standards, having to speak four languages and don't forget the dialect aspect, which is even more intense. Mm. You're holding yourself to that level. There are, there's got to be others that do too. Yeah. So you have to be okay with those others thinking you're stupid because yeah. you think that way you it's almost like your terrible karma now now you have to be okay with it yeah you know cuz you know that type of irrational inhumane standard does exist you've experienced it in your own way of thinking yeah you have to be willing to be judged and, ju- and seen as inferior by the, the people who still think like that. But if someone yeah. still thinks that way, don't you agree? They are suffering in their own minds. They have to be in total fear of being, tr- being judged that way. I mean, it's like judged a, the same way. Yeah. yeah. And so you can go, go from your own suffering in it and then have compassion for someone that judgy McJudger pants, right? If, yeah. Yeah. If that person truly truly judged you the way you thought they were judging you 
bless their heart. Like, oh, those poor people, man. Ugh, they're miserable if they truly believe that I should be able to speak this dialect, which you know as well as I do that that just sounds ridiculous. Yeah. That if they... <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay if they think I'm dumb because yeah. I don't want their smartness. That is inhumane yeah. to expect out of anybody. So you yeah. give the smart people who think you're dumb, you give them their smartness. It would be like yeah. when I came out of it to realize I would rather go to that religion's hell than to have to prove myself in their heaven, which was miserable. Yeah. Right? I don't want to have to do, no human being should have to reach that level of perfection and isolation to get into perfection to where they don't live and they don't, they're lifeless. You know, no one should have to be that obsessed with proving themselves to the point of total insanity just to feel okay about who they are. Uh -huh. So I said, well, relative to that expectation of which I've held myself to, I am... Relative to that expectation, I'm a failure. Well, I would rather fail and be free then to be real and truthful about myself. This is the truth of my ability. The truth of your ability to speak that language and that dialect was presented. That's the truth. Yeah. However they think about it is none of your business. Yeah. Right? But the only way for you to get that freedom is for you to make it not about you either. Like, why would you use language as a symbolic way to prove your superiority? I mean, you can look at the symbolism of speaking different languages and say, I absolutely used it as a mechanism to feel in superior as a person. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And I don't want it. I'd rather be inferior. So you go the route of the inferiority and you accept it. I'd rather be perceived inferior. Relative to that position, inferiority yeah. is awesome. Volunteer for it. <laughs> no, but it's true. It's funny you should say that because I said to my husband, you know what? I, I don't think I'm going to pursue the Italian lessons anymore because I don't think I, – I don't, I don't want that pressure of being perfect, like having to – I just don't want it. Do you know what I mean? Like for yeah. me, it's just like, but why do I have to learn a another language? You don't, and it could be to as make simple it easier as... for other people. You know what I mean? Like yes, and yeah. Do they speak English? No. You know so I mean? maybe it's for you to be able to have a a certain degree of communication ability, but that is don't use it to prove yourself as a person. That's where you're going no, wrong. That's the thing. That's where I'm going wrong. I'm not doing it for the right reason. Yeah, the co just, this I, is I about context, right? The context for why you're doing it was in pride and proving yourself, as if that's exactly. going to get them to like you. And then when they judged you, you felt like they didn't like you. And then you go down into your animal brain. You got to yeah. do it because. It's something you're in, you enjoy. It's learning a new language. You clearly aren't afraid to learn new things. So learn the new language and don't put so much pressure on you performing for them as if you're on stage performing. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> All right. All right. I think you that's, should, I will, so that's good. I'll review <laughs> this one. I'll review good. This one. Good. When do you want to talk again? Yeah, so next week I'm actually